All right, welcome uh, to uh, a roundtable discussion that uh, we've been having for a couple of uh, times now. Uh, this is one that we're labeling as uh, how to make, uh, how to navigate change, essentially making the most of change uh, as uh, we've all experienced a lot of uh, events over the past couple of um, months that has led to really making sure that um, every one of us can navigate change throughout our careers and uh, make sure that, yeah, all of us are looking at how to create goals, how to accomplish those goals as it relates to um, really making sure that, yeah, the, the changes that are coming along our, along our path are, are also accounted for in our goals. So I'm Kanal, one of the community managers here at Mentor Spaces. Really excited to kick off this discussion with our mentors. Um, we, we're joined by uh, Matt and April, who have been with us before. Uh, before we get started, I wanted to let everybody know that uh, you can ask questions here in the Q&A channel. If you have any that or comments or questions that uh, come up during the discussion, feel free to let us know in the in in the chat or in the QA channel. Um, you can also raise your hand and we can unmute you. Um, and if you are interested in connecting with one of these mentors, we just uh, found out that they haven't been paired up with a mentee yet. So please go ahead and message us. Um, we will have a survey at the end of this session to see if you have a preference for connecting with one of the mentors. Um, we also share this recording in the community. So if you are interested in connecting with a mentor um, after viewing this recording, please go ahead and message us in the concierge channel on Mentor Spaces. With that, I'll go ahead and pass it over to Randy Emelo, um, who's our moderator for today. Um, and he'll kick things off with, uh, with the questions that we have prepared for discussion with the mentors. Great, thank you, Kanal, and uh, appreciate everyone's presence today as the holidays rapidly close in on us. Um, as Kanal mentioned, my name's Randy Emelo. I'm uh, the program strategist here at Mentor Spaces. And uh, with us today, we have two mentor panelists that will be sharing their expertise, their lived experiences, as it relates to the topic of making the most of change. And uh, as we get started, I'm going to have each of the panelists just take a few moments, introduce yourself, what it is you do, and um, then we'll you know, kind of pick up and start, jump right into the topic. So why don't we start with uh, April? Um, go ahead, take a few moments, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm April Reed. I um, am a native of North Carolina and an alumni of the En-ROADS program for four years. I had some of my fondest memories part of this program. Um, so I am loving being able to participate, gosh, 20 plus years later, or I'll just say that. Um, and I am a nonprofit manager at a, an organization called Center for Black Women's Wellness, where we have a clinic and we have program services and we serve Atlantans on the South Side who are um, in the low socioeconomic area and there's a lot of need there so I'm loving doing that and I've been a nonprofit for gosh maybe 15 years now so nice to be here. That's great April I really appreciate you sharing Matt uh, and sharing your your experience with everyone on the call today. Uh, Matt why don't you take a few moments and introduce yourself. Sure. Um, Matt Hamilton, I am a Texas native um, and been here my whole life um, and kind of a wide variety of experiences over my 30 plus year career, um, primarily around legal and technology. And that's what I do now. I'm a, a sales um, operations and sales engineer for a, a, a technology company that we basically do software for um, you know, litigation and, and investigations and things like that. Um, so it's not quite as I'm on the, the kind of the polar opposite of the nonprofit. We're a very for-profit company. <laughs> um, our bottom lines are always kind of the, the big thing, but um, but certainly uh, admirable what you do, April. I, I appreciate hearing from that side as well. Great. Well, thank you so much. As we get ready to dive into our topic, um, you know, I, I love talking about uh, change. There's change in organizations. There's 
Uh, obviously, as Kanal alluded to, we're coming, well, I don't know where we are with the pandemic, but uh, we're, we're obviously over the last couple of years entered this threshold period of incredible uncertainty. Um, I have been in the workforce long enough to have seen lots of changes and in, in several seismic changes uh, like 9-11 and uh, the tech uh, bubble popping and some other things that have happened in my life also. I've made some uh, major career changes that uh, I started off in the military uh, working on reactor systems on, on submarines and, and uh, then ended up doing nonprofit work uh, along with you know, something much very similar to what April was doing, although I was doing work in Central and South America. Um, and, uh, and then, uh, you know, for-profit work, working for organizations uh, in leadership development. So lots of shifts and changes. Uh, and and uh, panelists, feel free to talk about uh, any aspect of change that you want. Um, really, it could be a job change. It could be a social economic change that you went through. It could be uh, just, um, you know, uh, again, you get to kind of build your bear here and, and pick your, your story. But in a sense, what I'd like to do is start off with, the, with a question we often use to start these conversations off. Describe a time when you went through some significant change. And, uh, you know, describe for us a little bit about what uh, were some of the difficult decisions that you might have faced or, um, you know, again, what were some of the circumstances that led up to that change? And why don't we just go ahead and, and open up and uh, April, if you feel comfortable jumping out there, jump out there and, and share a time with us when you kind of went through some significant change. Okay, sure. I can be long-winded, so I'm working on that. Um, <laughs> at home as well. I know my husband's like, wrap it up, April, really, I got it. So y'all bear with me. Um, you know, I love, Randy, how you talked about your job changes, because I think that's really relevant to people who are sort of trying to figure out their way in their career early on. Mm -hmm. Everybody always says, oh, well, it's okay if you change your mind, this and that, but it can sometimes feel kind of uh, deflating to feel like you started in one way and, and that just wasn't it or it was the timing was weird or so I want to piggyback really quick before I talk about that just on you know I have a, an undergraduate degree in Spanish and journalism mm. I am not a journalist um, my first job was as a Spanish teacher um, but I didn't go really into any of that as my life's work there was a, a really major situation health-wise that happened to me in my early 20s, it just made me like reevaluate. And so I just, I want to say that like in general, facing change, you know, you have to be, a, you have to be a, a bit brave and just kind of like, okay, this is hard. This might not have been my plan. I might feel like a little bit of, you know, failure, but it's okay. Right. So that's like, you know, not answering your question, but just, you know, saying, you know, putting it out there that, you know, approaching change takes a lot and you know we all have to sort of pat ourselves on the back when we get through that um yeah, april if you would i want to comment yeah. on that before we jump into your specific story that um i i do think that it's one of the things that people and we all of us tend to do is underappreciate the kind of emotional toll that you know, facing and managing and working through change can take. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, we can talk a little bit about some of those effects as well. But I, I think that you bring up a good point that uh, appreciate the fact that whenever you find yourself on the threshold of change or, or you know, the front door getting ready to walk into it, that um, typically, you know, there needs to be some thought given as to what the impacts are going to be and don't downplay that like if you find yourself being tired a lot mm -hmm. and uh, losing energy halfway through the day all those kind of things is a good indicator that that you're deeply in the in the midst of it yes <laughs> so, sorry about that yeah and no i just i briefly um 
So yeah, every, all the things you said you're saying are sort of just making me think of things. But my example quickly really is this is the everything that happened in my job after COVID. Um, being a nonprofit organization, we got busier right away. I mean, there were grant opportunities for COVID relief. They weren't all in the space that we work in, but we kind of stretched ourselves and we were like, okay, people need things. So let's, you know, pivot into some other areas. Let's build up areas. We, I mean, we really had a great year last year in terms of funding um, because of all of the money that foundations and, and corporations and, you know, the government government was just sort of trying to pour into the community and we were the vessel. So even though it was exciting and amazing as the program manager, oh my gosh, talk about tired, uh, all these things. And I felt guilty because it was like, people need more than I need. Like I have a job, I'm okay. And I'm complaining because I'm exhausted because I'm trying to figure out how to, to help people who are more in need. So it was a crazy time. Um, it was a great time for lots of reasons, but um, I think one thing that got us through is just, you know, keeping your head down and focusing on the the road ahead. And then you kind of like look up one day and you're like, oh, we got through that like successfully. So my example is just kind of, you know, an example where I just kept working at it and then you know, eventually things turned out. That's not always how we deal with change, you know, by just like plowing through, but sometimes that's how you do. No, that's great. I'm going to come back with a couple follow-up questions um, because I think what you're describing is uh, a type of change that it, it was opportunistic in nature, meaning that you could have said no to it um, and stuck to your knitting but you would have also uh, given up a lot of opportunity to advance your mission. And yes. so there's sometimes when it's opportunistic, but it also feels uh, a little bit like it's being imposed. And so change also has a different social emotional feeling if it feels like it's being thrust on you and you yes. don't get to pick your time. Mm -hmm. um, and so we'll, we'll come back on that in a moment. Matt, why don't we jump into your story? What was a, a significant situation when you experienced some change? That's, that's tough because even, you know, I thought about it and then I've even listened and thinking about it. Um, it's, I, I don't know that there's, there's several that are kind of hard. And I think I even mentioned one in a, a previous session, we talked about change where um, I came home from work one day and my wife and our child, our two-year-old, almost two-year-old son were there and she said, hey, I'm pregnant, we're moving, all in one <laughs> sentence. And so that was a lot to deal with. Um, and then in the course of all that, we were we had sold our house, we were waiting on our house to be built, another house because we had to move. Um, and we were supposed to stay at my grandmother's for a period of time and she passed away about two weeks before we were supposed to move in with her. And then in the midst of all that, I got the bright idea to change jobs. So we just did, you know, it was a lot of change in a hurry. Um, and I kind of joke that <laughs> I've had so much change. I think it, what it was is when I was in high school or, or maybe even late junior high, I read the story of Walter Mitty. Um, and if you know the, the story or if you've seen the movie that was done, it's like he lives all these adventures. And that's just kind of how I've wanted to live my life where, you know, hey, I'm interested in this. Let's go try it, which is great for a person, but not so great for financial stability with a family. <laughs> so um, so I've done a lot of different things and change. But the thing that's kept me going through it, even through the midst of that, is, is really kind of twofold. One is change is inevitable. Uh, good, bad or indifferent. There's going to be change. Um, you know, yesterday I woke up and it was 50 degrees as a high here today. It's 80. It, I had no control over it. It's just change. It's just one of the things that we, we, we come across. And then the second thing that, that it follows me up and it, it helps a lot of people, I think too, is faith. Um, you know, having a faith system, whether that's just through supports and mentors or actually having a religious faith that you, you ground yourself in or however you manifest that. Um, or it sits in your life is a great place to be grounded and centralized and then come back to and go, okay, let me reset for a minute, take a breath. Let me 
take a moment in that and then move on. Um, like April, you mentioned your degrees. I've got, I have a political science degree and a public administration master's. And then I went oh, back to seminary master's. I'm sorry, just got excited. <laughs> I have um, that too, yeah. So, um, and I don't do any of it. I'm a sales operations guy. I mean, I, I do, obviously, a lot of that comes into play in business in general. Then my, mm -hmm. my seminary degree is is obviously where my faith is, but and, and has helped facilitate that. And I do work there, but, um, yeah, that's, I think it's just, you know, one foot in front of the other and it may be painful. It may be joyous in, when you're in, in change, but just realize that tomorrow presents another change opportunity that could be good, bad, or indifferent in some cases. Yeah, that's and really good. I really appreciate that. Go ahead. Sorry. No, Angel. I was just going to no. say, my faith reminds me that everything happens for a reason, right? Mm -hmm. So even that change that you're like, oh my God you know, the one that you didn't necessarily want or you don't see the benefit of right away. There's something there. Uh, there's something there. And you may not benefit from it, maybe someone later. Now I'm sounding like a old person, right? <laughs> but it's true. You seriously will learn that as you go along. Like you may not be the beneficiary, but somebody could be. And so it all matters, right? I think that what I learned uh, about change uh, imposed and change I initiated is that um, in a sense, I never know what's good for me. I always try to judge, you know, good or right. Uh, I only know what my expectations are. And typically when change happens, my expectations uh, change. That's, that's the hardest thing is adapting and accommodating reality. This is, this is what reality is saying right now. How are you going to deal with this, Randy? And I like the fact that, uh, and Matt, thank you for bringing up, um, you know, having some, being grounded in purpose. That's what I hear when, when I hear you say that. I also have a theology degree and, uh, and, I, and I have a system of belief. But regardless of what that is for everyone, the core is hope, you know, is hope and purpose. And the reality is as human beings, we're meaning making machines. So we make meaning out of every action or inaction that happens in our life. And so uh, having some way of bringing, you know, focus in the midst of that is, and that's exactly what I heard April saying. It's like, oh, it's coming at you. So just, let's just put our heads down and work through it. And in a way, when you're going through rapid change, especially like Matt, you brought up, you know, you have three or four changes that are happening at the same time. Uh, I remember once, not too many years ago, about five years ago, my oldest daughter passed um, and my business took a sideways turn and, uh, and I ended up in the middle of a divorce. Mm -hmm. So those three things were happening uh, within, within a three month period of time. It all happened at once and uh, took, you know, 18 to 24 months for all of that to kind of, for me to feel like I emerged out from the other side of that. And it was painful and it was emotional, uh, but it's what was happening at that time in my life. And um, so again, we don't, we don't always get to say what it is, uh, but we do have some control is what I'm hearing at least from April and from, and from Matt, from your stories. So April, going back in a little bit about you. So, um, you know, based off of this experience and other experiences that you've had, uh, how do you manage change? How do you process it for personally? Um, I guess I'd take, I try to take a beat, you know, uh, and not react. Um, because even if it's positive, I mean, often the first reaction can be maybe not exactly how you feel. It's just your initial feeling. Um, so especially if it's something hard, I try to, to take a beat. I'm usually the one that's like uh, neutralizing the group, you know, or the other person who's impacted or, you know, because a lot of times change is not, you know, an isolated thing. You know, if it, even if it just affects you, it's going to affect someone else some other way. If you have a family and or coworkers or whatever. So I'm kind of like the peace, 
maker, like everybody, let's just take a deep breath first. Um, and there are some really great breathing exercises that help you to, to minimize stress and, and situations where you're feeling, you know, tension in your body and, you know, not to get all like granola crunchy about it, but, you know, that's a real thing that you feel stress in your body, right? And then it's just, you know, you walking around with it and don't even know that, right? So I try to first just do that and then just you know, process it if possible, you know, obviously some situations you have to make a decision or act quickly. When I have to do that, I do, of course, but if I have opportunity, I just, I, I would say the first thing is to take a beat. And then obviously there's a lot more, you know, to managing change, but that's, that's what I'll contribute to that question. Great. I appreciate that. So in a moment, and, and I, th I think it's, it's sage wisdom actually to pause when agitated or doubtful. And typically that's in the midst of change and to, and to pause and look at your surroundings, consider, you know, as you were saying, you know, how is this impacting other people? Because we tend to get very myopic, at least I do, I think all about me. And, uh, but then I go, oh, wait a minute, so-and-so and so-and-so. And, so and, and then that changes me personally. and. And um, I'm also hearing from what you're sharing, April, uh, you have a servant's heart. I don't know if anyone's ever told you that, but it definitely comes through very clearly that you go right to action then, you know, right to what can I, how can I be otherly in this situation, which also becomes a great uh, stabilizing factor, I believe. So thanks for sharing that. Matt, how do you, uh, how do you get into managing your change? Uh, well, I can give you my answer and I can give you the good answer because um, my <laughs> answer is um, I'm a bulldozer. Um, I, I tend to just let's jump in and go. Um, let's let's get through this as fast as we can with as minimal casualties along the way. Um, I, I try to take those beats. I try to pause and um, um, be mindful of the situation as a whole, but I, I tend to think kind of quick about six steps ahead and go, if I can get to those six steps, then I can get to the next six steps or five or whatever the number is. So it's, it's not necessarily the best plan. And my wife has reminded me throughout the years that, um, you need to breathe for a minute and let's, let's work with it, work through this. Um, the, the real, the good answer is much more like what April says is where you're, you do take a, a quick evaluation of what the situation is. Now, if it's an immediate need, you know, if the house is burning down, that's different. Right. Um, but if it's, you know, a change that you see coming, like I'm in the midst of my, my dad has Alzheimer's. So he's on the decline at a rapid pace, but it's a long change. So it's a little de easier to take breaths and absorb information and calculate how you're going to address it. Um, my son, who's 23, is in the midst of moving um, and changing his life and, and getting ready to get married and all this other stuff. So I'm getting to watch it from a different different perspective of all those bouncing balls in the air for him, um, as well as, you know, kind of launching out into about a second year of his career and, and you know, taking those major milestone steps. So it's easier to be the way the wise sage advice when you're doing it from arm's length. It's a lot harder when it's happening to you and you need to remember, take a pause, take a breath, think for a second, because the next action you take can impact where the end result goes. Yeah, It may be the great end result, but it could also derail a lot of stuff and make it a lot much longer uh, path to get where you ultimately wanted to go. Wow, that's great. Really uh, great advice. Um, Very good. What I, what I hear you saying, uh, Matt, a little bit is, you know, you have to know yourself. You have to know what your tendencies are. And um, there's, you know, uh, maybe in hindsight, you could look back and say, oh, this was a, a poor decision I made in the midst of this change or whatever. But there's a lot to be said as we were talking about just a few moments ago that action is required um, in action a lot of times can leave you feeling like a victim. Uh, and when change is happening, think about what are the constructive and productive things you can do uh, in, in the midst of that if you can. The problem is that anxiety will hijack your uh, 
your cognitive capabilities and you will go into automatic behavior. And so that's where knowing your tendencies is really important and, and then making yourself accountable to some other people who know you as well that, that you will listen to, uh, which probably gets to the last thing that we can touch on here. Our time just evaporated today. Uh, but as we, as we get ready to leave this topic, uh, what advice would you have given your younger self? And also maybe uh, you can throw in there, how, how does mentorship uh, serve in a situation of change? Uh, April? Thought I was on mute. So um, <laughs> I like what you said about, I think you said something about knowing yourself. Yes, and knowing your triggers. Um, the advice I would give myself really is to get to know yourself better, right? Get to know your strengths, your weaknesses. I love that part about triggers. I mean, that is like in all, in life, personal life, work life, everywhere we have triggers and we really uh, underestimate how they cause us to respond, um, whether positive or negative. So I really like the, you know, get to know yourself and um, your strengths, your weaknesses, um, and find a person to talk to if you can't uh, sort of work through it on your own. Um, and just remember that even, even though the change feels, might feel uh, really jarring, um, you know, for the most part, or we do have some control in how we react in terms of just taking a minute. I know I felt a lot of times in my young career that I had to respond right away. I had to do something, I had to say something. And as I got older um, and, I, and I had a therapist tell me, which I thought was great advice, you know, you are, you have more control than you realize. If you need a minute, take a minute. Right. Like you don't have to if everyone else is just freaking out. You don't have to jump into that energy. Right. You can step on the outside and take a minute, even if you're in, you know, a meeting that feels particularly stressful. You know, you know, just a minute. I'm going to go to the restroom, go splash your face, or, you know, just feel just realize you have a little more control than you realize um, because you have control over how you respond. Thank you. Sorry, Martin. I ramble a little. So, <laughs> no, no, you made good, good points. It was like a little. <laughs> Matt? Uh, <clears throat> well, I would concur with, with exactly what April's saying. Um, the other thing, and this is not a shameless plug because of the group we're in, but I would have told my younger self to, to spend more time with a mentor. You know, find somebody that is older than you, that has more experience, that could at least be a sounding board. You don't want somebody that's telling you how to do it, but somebody to listen outside of even like a parent or a grandparent or a, a, a family member, but somebody that you can trust that is going to take you at your faults and, and kind of give you some sage advice along the way. And the other thing, and, and it kind of goes with what April said, and I'll make it brief, is I, I, I tell a lot of young people when I've worked with students in particular is um, a lot of your problems are self-inflicted. You always have a choice. You can choose to mouth off. You can choose to hold your breath and catch your thoughts and then say the right thing. Or you can choose to make the wrong choice at the wrong time. Um, but if you'll pause, you can see things clear. Sometimes even just asleep. It's amazing how much the next day looks different. And whatever was critical at the moment tonight that was heartbreaking or life shattering, tomorrow really doesn't have the same sting. Um, or is a lot clearer and a lot better for you. Um, you know, you get clarity both in positive or in negative. So okay. I'll try to stay a little more brief. <laughs> no, that, that's great. And take that time if you need it, right? Don't feel pressured by other people to like solve this tonight. Okay, who says so? Like, I don't feel equipped to do that right now, you know? So I love that, Matt. Sleep on it. Absolutely. Yeah, there's, um, it's something that we need to put into our vocabulary. Um, you know, yes, but I'm going to wait to give you a response instead mm -hmm. of 
you know, feeling like it has to be yes or no right now. Very few circumstances are actually that way, but I think most of us are conditioned to think that way. Mm -hmm. that we have to proffer, um, you know, a yes, no response right away. All right. So thank you so much, mentors, for sharing your great wisdom and advice. Um, Kanal, over to you to take us out. Yeah, just want to say thank you as well. Um, really great sage advice here um, on navigating change, especially in the current landscape that we are, are in and also just preparing for the new year. I know we all look to turn the page. Uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, Nat said sleeping on it, well, we're probably going to, you know, push this 2021 year out in a couple of weeks here and uh, really look forward to making some changes in our careers and our lives uh, as, as we try to accomplish our, our goals. Um, so with that, I just wanted to mention that we have another session next week. Uh, this is going to be a spotlight session on careers in tech. So if you're interested in the technology industry, um, we're just learning about what people in the technology industry do. Uh, please join this session. We're going to have uh, really great mentors to, to share their experiences around this. I believe Matt is joining us for that as well. Um, so look forward to uh, hosting that session or and that discussion with more uh, mentees. And if you are interested in connecting with a mentor, yeah, feel free to message us in the concierge channel um, as well as uh, yeah, requesting a match on the app. Uh, with that, we'll go ahead and close this out. Uh, I hope everyone has a great rest of your day and a good weekend. Uh, look forward to next week's sessions. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Thanks.